hello everyone and thank you for joining us for this very special podcast. Um, we've been talking about this for quite a while on our channel and he's been gracious enough to join us today. We're privileged and honored to have the one and only Greg Manorino join us. Uh, and he's gonna, we're gonna be talking about a lot of different subjects in regards to the financial system, the reset and what he sees short and long term for the markets and everything related to that. Um, if you are new to the channel, please do like and subscribe and share as it does help us grow. Greg, thanks for joining us and welcome to the podcast. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for having me. And I think this is going to be fun. I, I totally agree. I've been looking forward to this for quite a while, to be honest with you. So Thanks. for our viewers and anybody who's been under a rock <laughs> that doesn't actually know you um, the way we've been privileged to know you and your, and your followers have, can you just kind of give a brief synopsis on your overall background? I got involved in this a very, very long time ago. Um, I was really a kid. My dad got me a job working for a Wall Street bank. That's that's the truth. Um, I got hired there working at Bear Stearns before the whole non people like think I was not at Bear when the whole thing went down. I was a kid. I was uh, wow. This is back uh, nineteen uh, in the eighties. You know, I mean, <laughs> I'm an old guy now. But anyway, yeah. So that, that's what really got me interested in 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 this whole thing uh it was actually the movie wall street that i was like it's just the funniest thing is um my dad just happened to come out one day and say hey greg you know what do you want to do with yourself and i was like well you know i just saw this movie and my dad used to work on wall street so he was like hey you know i i know someone and that's how i i got started in this and it really was captivating for me at the time uh turned out to not be the right career path at that time because i left that i went and i did medicine for 20 years um, and then left that and kind of went full circle back into the Wall Street financial kind of thing. It's just, you know, it, it fascinates me. I like the uh, the craziness of it in many, many ways. I like to figure out why things work, where cash is most likely to move, studying the environment. It's become an obsession with me on on, this, on a grand scale, honestly. And, uh, and I just try to keep people ahead of the curve. I want people to understand what's happening why it's happening and what they can do about it really because look we all understand that we're living in an environment that makes no sense at all okay it's completely twisted it's rigged to the highest possible order that's our strength understanding that it is rigged to the highest possible order we we have to we have to discern who our enemy is what they want to achieve and that just gives us an enormous amount of power i think look the system can either destroy you or you can turn the tables on the system and that's what i'm all about I'm like, okay, this is what's going on here. What can we do to counter strategize against what we know is coming? Are we going to be right 100% of the time? Absolutely not. But we're going to get it right most of the time. I mean, and I mean a vast majority of the time, and that's all we need to do. 100%. I, I, I love everything you said, and, and you, know, you summated it well. So thank you for that. So there's a lot of questions that I've got for you, and I'm going to try to combine them in the interest of time because I know you're busy. Uh, so let's talk about our favorite person, Jerome Powell. <laughs> I know, I know, tongue, tongue in cheek, sardonically. But um, I wanted to get your take on this, Greg, that last week, um, some people were sort of anticipating that he was going to do his first interest rate drop, and he didn't. Um, my question is, were you surprised by that? And when do you anticipate these three rate changes are going to happen? No, no, it, it didn't surprise me at all that he did. not I, I think the general consensus among Wall Street people, and I, I talk to everybody. I, I still have friends that work at the big banks, and no, nobody was anticipating this to happen at all. Um, it's you know uh, a, a few meetings from now probably will be will be the right time for them to to do this. They're going to. I know right now uh, after I hate him so much. I'm sorry to even say that, but I can't stand listening to the man. It's it's all a it's a psyop on a grand scale. But anyway. Um, you know, he came out this weekend, you know, kind of almost talking about, you know, higher for longer. Look, he, he's dying. They're dying to cut rates, period, the end. And they're going to. There's no doubt about it. Um, I, I, you know, it's hard really to say. Maybe two more meetings. We'll, we'll start to see that. He's going to very well prepare the market before that time. But you, we're going we're gonna to get the same story. The back and forth nonsensical trying to keep the market off balance, which they always do, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and you, look, we just understand what they go. The Fed wants to cut rates along with other central banks. They already have the economy by the throat. They have the consumer by the throat. They want to continue to inflate because that's how a central banks, it's where their power resides in only one thing, their ability to do it. 
So in other words, the Federal Reserve, they can't just say, hey, guess what we're going to do, everyone? We're going to keep rates low. We're going to cut rates. They have to get into the market and make it happen. They're not magical. People don't understand this concept, but it's it's so basic to understand that if the Fed says they're going to cut rates, how do they do it? They have to get into the market. They have to buy the debt. Um, <laughs> but, and obviously, that's inflationary along with everything else that's going on here right now. But they're going to cut rates. They want to cut rates. Um, and I, I think, you know, it, it's it's going to be sooner than later, but I would say a couple more months from now. So maybe March, April time frame is. Um, uh, um, uh, probably not March. Uh, I'm going to say April, June, April, June ish. That's what it looks okay. like to me. And that's kind of like the consensus among people that I'm talking to, what they're looking forward to. Everyone knows it's coming. I mean, this yeah. is no secret and uh, it's common. It's just a matter of how the, what they're going to do and it's just more easy money it's going to prop up the market more debt and it's a it's a terrible thing yeah it's totally un unsustainable you're so right um greg this is something you always you always talk about that I've, has always been interesting to me and some of our viewers is you talk a lot about consistently about the 10-year yield i heard you talk about on this morning's podcast yeah. um what do you think we should be looking for specifically with regards to that the 10-year yield is the benchmark. This is the one that everybody watches. Uh, it's it's the key. The debt market is the key to the markets, period. Um, the debt market is the driver of the markets. I mean, you turn on Bloomberg and Fox and CNBC and, you know, all they do, and it drives me nuts, is they want you to focus on the Dow 30, the Dow 30, the Dow 30. They, they don't talk about the drivers of the market. The drivers of the market, they're responsible for where the market is going. Henceforth, why, you know, wh why do people think? Is it just some surprise here that central banks have been in here rigging the debt market now since the last meltdown? I mean, how many years are we talking? Uh, since 2008? And it's not stopping. So they take the largest aspect of the market. They're, they're artificially suppressing rates. And what that does is it just opens a doorway for cash to move into risk assets. It's very, oh, the stock market is. So, you know, gauging what the 10 year year, year yield is doing um, is what I, I really don't care about anything else. I, and I mean that. If we can gauge where the 10 year yield is going, let's talk, let's put this into a perspective real quick. If people are watching the 10 year yield, and they see the 10-year yield dropping, that means that debt is being bought. If they see mm -hmm. the yield rising, that means debt is selling off, okay? Um, it's, people, have, people have a hard time understanding that, just the basic premise of how it works. Now, there's another component to this that is seriously important. People need to follow not just what the 10-year yield is, is doing, but they need to follow the Dixie or the dollar index. These things... They, there's a compensatory mechanism that exists between these things. And I discovered this many, many, many years ago. So by watching these two, um, if you watch the 10 year yield and the dollar index here, you can get a really good gauge as to where the market is really is likely going to go, or where cash is going to flow. As an example, if you see the 10 year yield dropping, that means risk in the market is is waning. So cash is going to make its way more than likely into the stock market. Now, let's say, for example, you see, uh, let's say you see a stock market sell off. Let's see. Oh my goodness. The Dow dropped a thousand points. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is I want to see what the 10 year yield is doing. Did it move? Did we see a big sell off? Um, and what again then is what the dollar is doing now to sum this up, to make it really simple for people. I created an indicator. It's called the MMRI Marino market risk indicator. It's free to everybody who wants to use it. It's right on my website. Uh, traderschoice.net, top of the second page. This gauges risk in real time. The market seems to be very comfortable right now where it is. The MMRI is sitting at around 260, which is a high risk zone. We were in an extreme risk zone recently. But if we understand, look, that the Fed and, and central banks collectively, I think, get in here. They're going to buy more debt. They're going to suppress rates. All that does is simply is, again, create a mechanism where cash is seeking to go into the stock market comes out of other assets as well, creating more distortions. Look, there's no price action discovery market. In this market today, nothing makes sense. There's no price discovery between a single, I don't know, and there's not one asset today, in my view, that has a real price discovery mechanism. How can it have that when we've had central banks, none more so than the Fed, rig the debt market to the highest order and then some since the last meltdown? It's a fake market and nothing makes sense, but Understanding it's fake, there's our strength, there's our power. Well said, as always. Um, okay, so, you know, speaking of that, Greg, there's an interesting point. As I watched the market today, it's down almost 233 points as of right now. 
But I noticed the S&P is making a very gradual move up, um, it, which, you, like you said, everything is contrapuntal to each other. What can we glean, if anything, of the S&P 500 continuing to move up while the Dow goes down? Well, you know, look, I think we just the Dow hit several record highs recently. The S&P hit a couple of record highs recently. This 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 is no secret. Anyone that's been following my work knew this was coming. Told told everyone from last year where this is going to go. The mechanism now of war expanding war, more debt being pulled into the now. Um, that's that's it's bullish. It's bullish for the stock market, period the end. And we're gonna see more distortions moving forward. Again, as long as they can keep risk at bay, and I believe they're going to use every effort they possibly can right now, especially being that it, you probably know how I my take on this. This is a presidential selection year. They need to prop up the market, they need people distracted. People, the illusion of the market is such a powerful thing. People see their 401k plans doing well. They see the stock market higher. They they, they hear uh, our politicians cheering the Dow, cheering the SEP. They think everything's great. Couldn't possibly be better. Yeah. Um, regardless of what's actually going on, it's an illusion. It's not real. So I expect to see rate suppression here moving forward here for as long as, as far as the eye can see. Um, a, an artificially propped up stock market it doesn't make any sense. This market doesn't belong here. Everybody knows that. It's so overly va overvalued, distorted, twisted by every metric you want to look at with, with every single forward looking economic indicator in, in going pointing lower business investment is non-existent anymore. Um, you know, and that's a, a huge leading indicator here. There's no, people aren't investing money in their businesses here. Not even big corporations right now. Well, what are they doing? They're laying off, they're laying off by the tens of thousands. And what's Wall Street doing? It's rewarding them for doing that. It's amazing. Oh, this company's laying off 20,000. Ah, boom, goes up the stock. Their stock, you know, gains in value. It's, it's really a crazy thing to think about what's happening. People being destroyed, markets going higher. As long as they can keep risk at bay, and I believe they're going to do that to a greater degree moving into this year. Perfect. That was awesome. Well, so on the backs of that, Greg, um, when do you portend that the stock market might crash? And if it does, do you think it'll go worse than the Great Depression? It, again, the, we don't need to guess. People that understand what's going to, where this is all going to start. Um, are pretty clear on this. Okay, everyone's again being told to watch the Dow Jones Industrial Average, watch the Dow Jones Industrial Average. They don't even talk about the broader market when you turn on the mainstream Bloomberg, Fox Business. It's all about the Dow. So people yeah. think that the, that the big crash is going to begin and end in the stock market. Nothing could possibly be further, further from the truth. It's the real big cr the crash here, the meltdown is going to begin and end in the debt market. Now, again, gauging from looking at the ten-year yield, we when we see and we will an uncontrolled spike in the ten-year yield. Let's say. Uh, what are we at right now? Like 4.12 this morning. If we see it spark, oh spike to five, five and a quarter, five fifths, and I'm talking about in rapid succession here. What's that going to do? It's very simple. It's going to put a lot of pressure on the stock market and cash is just going to bleed out of the debt market. Again, when you see bond yields rising, what happens? Debt is selling off. When debt is selling off, that puts pressure on the stock market. The stock market sells off. Simultaneously cash leaving the debt market, leaving the stock market. It does not fly away to money heaven. It's going to look for places to go. In my opinion, it's going into commodities in a massive way. So people, in my opinion here, need exposure to commodities. Here's my favorite of all time, silver. Okay. I think you probably know that. Gold is my second favorite. Platinum, platinum, a third here. Uh, I think cash is going to make its way into lots of things, even musical instruments like we were uh -huh. speaking about before here, artwork here, classic cars, all kinds of collectible things. Again, that's where it's going to go. But commodities are going to be the, the most massive beneficiary, I believe, of, of this, um, of the meltdown here. And I think it's also going into cryptos as well. Um, all the big cryptos are going to benefit. It's just a matter of, of, of understanding that. The, the cash, again, it doesn't just disappear. It just looks for the, the most likely place where to go. And if we understand that commodities, at least in my view, are insanely suppressed right now based against global debt, um, and that's only going to get much, much worse. So what do you want to do? What do you want to do? You want to sit back and do nothing? You want to be, in my opinion, this is what people need to do. It's very simple. Stay along the stock market right now until we see an uncontrolled sell-off in the debt markets will be reflected in the 10-year yield and in the MMRI. Again, free to everyone right on my website, tracechoice.net. I promise to keep everybody ahead of the curve on this. And I think I've been doing a pretty good job of it. Okay, so gain exposure to the market right now. 
let them let them play their games and we're going to play ours if they want to inflate the stock market and they're going to we want to be long the market we also want to be paid paid to own a, a, a company or an exchange traded fund you want a dividend okay so there you, you want to generate cash flow for yourself so and I, and I I put out several um lists of exchange traded funds people might want to look at in my free newsletter uh, on Substack. I uh, hope people do take advantage of that. And then again, gaining exposure or more so to commodities, physical assets, as we just talked about. Um, I think crude oil is another place where people want to be commodities across the board. And I think if people are looking for, like, let's say, for example, uh, an exchange traded fund or an ETF, they, they want to they want to invest in one that has is exposed to a broad basket of of commodities here. And, and some of these pay, pay really crazy dividends monthly. So, I mean, you're getting paid to own it, which is beautiful. And then you're setting yourselves up for where this is eventually going to go. That, it, it, in, in my view, it's a no-brainer. It's just very simple to, to just put this together. Yeah, I, I, I'm right there with you. Um, you. You segued into a perfect question I was going to ask you on the backs of all that. So we'll kind of segue there. Um, you mentioned silver, gold. I agree with that. Also primarily because of manufacturing and the limited amount of silver for that. So with silver, let's break that down a little bit. I kind of asked you a couple of questions in one, Greg. Um, what type of silver, and do you agree with junk silver? Do you think that's a good option? And what about silver ETFs? What are your thoughts on that? I don't like silver ETFs. It's funny. I don't like them. I, I don't. I mean, if someone wants to play with the ETF, just as, let's say, a swing trade, day trade, something like that. Okay, whatever. I, I get it. I get that. Um, but, but no, um, I don't, I haven't messed with the silver ETF, gold ETF in like, I don't know, it's been, it's been a very, very years, it's been years. Now I want to hold this stuff in my hand. That's the truth. I don't think there's such a thing as a junk silver. I know people like to use that term, but I, you know, it's silver. Okay. If it's got silver in it, there's silver in it, it's silver. Okay. I own it. I own a lot of that stuff. I've been, I've been, I've been buying this stuff for, for a really, really long time. Um, anyway. So yeah, um, gain exposure that way by the by the physical asset. I think you know if people are going to buy it, stick to small denominations. Small. I, I don't you know the big ones here because there is some um, you know activity that people have come across here. Fake stuff. It's harder to fake the smaller denominations. The big stuff sometimes they're filled with tungsten and stuff like that. Mm. You, know, you got to go through a reputable dealer. Um, I don't really like to recommend anyone honestly. But people should do their own research as to, you know, just, just someone that, that has a good reputation out there. Um, when I was living in Vegas, I had a, a guy that I used to deal with over there. Um, I mean, you know, like I said, I trusted him. It was a, it was a gold and silver dealer over there. He also, like, he also sold inst musical instruments and stuff like that. Just so I used to go in there. I just said, hey, you know, give me a ring. Call me if you get something in. So, you know, he used to do that. And I used to go over and I trusted him. Again, I bought small denominations from him, I, even, you know, with that. But that's what people need to do. You know, small denominations uh, of gold and silver. I think people need to be much more weighted into silver than, than gold. Just for a few uh, you know, very, very simple to understand concepts. I mean, concepts, uh, the, the gold to silver ratio, and then you've got the gold Dow ratio. Um, in, in my opinion, it makes uh, silver the most undivided asset right now on the planet. And I think that presents massive opportunity for people. But that's, again, my opinion. People need to do their own research. Into this. Sure. What are your thoughts also, uh, in addition to that, in terms of uh, copper as a backstop, if silver is difficult to take delivery? Yeah, right here. Right. I, I like copper, too. I like copper, too. Cool. Um, in, in the hierarchy of it, I would say this is like probably my, my, my fourth favorite right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, silver... Uh, uh, number one, gold, number two, platinum, palladium, number three, and then this would be four. But, you know, it's just the way I look at it. I think people need it. I think people should have exposure to it as well and own, own the physical asset. It's hard because it's, you know, you, you need a big space to put this stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a good <laughs> point. Backing up just a sec, uh, Greg, to mop up something on the, the stock side. Um, I think it was last Friday, the Magnus, Magnificent Seven tech stocks uh, were pricing to continue to soar beside, uh, despite nosebleed PE ratios. Do you mm -hmm. see this continuing for the foreseeable future? Well, I, I think this market needs to fall, including the Magnificent Seven. I I, I think, uh, in fact, you know, I've been telling people this for the longest time. It's just this market doesn't make it, There's no pullbacks. There's no corrections anymore. It just has been almost straight up here on anticipation of more easy money from the Federal Reserve. You know, you got things like fundamental factors that are supposed to matter. They don't matter anymore. It's all about easy money here. The market does need to give some back. I would not 
be surprised whatsoever to see the overall market and tech maybe even especially in light of what's happened lately to 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 pull back it should it should pull back we should see another floor be formed and that would be a nice buying opportunity in my in my opinion i i told people last year that i think 24 is going to be the year for tech i think people need exposure to tech overall um the big tech companies i think they're going to do phenomenal um you you know you can also get gain exposure to tech via multiple exchange traded funds uh jepq is one that i'm heavily invested in that does pay a monthly uh dividend as well um you know it, 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 you got to make the market work for you honestly that's what we need to do look we can't sidestep their system we have to participate in it unfortunately you know we all we all unfortunately uh use federal reserve and notes to transact there's no different it's no different for me a guy like me of trying to make uh, an exchange traded fund let's say that's even run by jp morgan like jepq for example than someone transacting in, in in federal reserve notes it's the same thing people think it's different but it's not um, I mean, personally, uh, I, I, I think people should be dumping dollars here and converting that into something else here. I mean, the, the, the currency is being destroyed deliberately by central banks. It's a race to the bottom. I've been telling people this for 10 years. It's not going to stop. Currency devaluation is going to accelerate moving forward. There's just no doubt about it. I mean, they have, what are they going to do? They're going to continue to inflate. We have an economy here that's going nowhere. And what's, where's the debt going? It's soaring. And that is going to be another mechanism with wars, expanding wars, funding for Israel, funding for Ukraine, this new war that and we are at war right now in the Middle East, a protracted war here. That's going to require hundreds of billions of dollars more. And that's massively inflationary. They can't just create it out there. Where's that cash come from? Do we have a war chest? No. Does any nation have a war chest? No. Yo, maybe it could be considered that because it's the central banks who fund it all. All wars are bank wars. And everybody knows that. It's no secret thousand percent i mean how could you how could you see it any other way when you see it you see it like you said so yeah absolutely so um with that in mind uh greg what role if anything would you say uh you're talking about gold and silver and other precious metals what what role would you say bartering might play once this economy has its big shakeout i wish people would start transacting in it now i mean if they have to wait to that to that you know look if people want to buy assets see Someone wants to buy one of my guitars, one of my cars, artwork. I will gladly accept gold, silver, or whatever. You know, a, a copper, a platinum plate. I will gladly do that. But you know, look, yes, look. Our greatest commodity is each other. That's that's number one. We need yeah. to start establishing relationships with with our neighbors. And don't, don't walk through life with blinders on. If you happen to be walking down your block, don't ignore the guy or the girl on the other side. Maybe just give him a hand wave or something. That's where you start a relationship. That's what starts. We, we're going to need, we have to prepare for a worst case scenario. It may never happen. I think it's going to happen. I, I think we're, this, everything is lining up to, we are going into a worst case scenario, full meltdown of the system here, a locking up of the system, a credit freeze of the system here, a completely new system is going to be uh, instituted. Absolutely. I've been warning about this for years. Okay. That's where we're going, but we're going to need each other too. We need to be lying on each other. Um, you know, people are arming themselves to the teeth, but you know, it's the golden thread. Someone said this to me in my blog, the golden thread is love. If we all learn to love each other in this world and not listen to the propaganda, how they separate us all by everything they can come up with, okay? They divide and conquer. The oldest tactic in the book, uh, if we came together, we could turn, turn this whole thing around. But people have been so indoctrinated, so frankly dumbed down, they don't know which end is up anymore. So what do they do? They do. They revert to their primal instinct, kill. No, we don't want to kill anyone. We want to make friends with people. We want to form alliances with people. That's what we want. That's in, that's the next level here, period. So, uh, yes, you do. Uh, absolutely. Why shouldn't people be right now transacting in this? If they won't, they're going to stick the Federal Reserve notes or Central Bank issue notes until they're forced to do it, unfortunately. Uh, every, no one acts until they're forced to do something. That's really the, the sad aspect of this entire thing. Why do we have to be forced into doing something? Because that's what they wanted to do. They want to create a scenario where we beg for a new system. Why, why do people think they're creating slaves to the system right now? That's what it's all about here. Easy money policies, getting more people on board, on, on, on creating this neo-feudal system that we are in now. Extreme haves, extreme have-nots, a, a wipeout 
of the middle class on a global scale. We are in full swing. Been warning about this for over 10 years right now. I mean, can anyone deny that is not what's happening? It is what's happening right now. Uh, people buried in debt. They can't make ends meet. Uh, debt default skyrocketing here. Uh, repossessions on everything you could dream about here. And it's unfortunate when people are, they don't get it. They don't see it. And then they're looking for a savior. They're looking for some kind of a figurehead that's going to get them through this. Their faith is in the wrong spot, in my opinion, but that's just me. <laughs> yeah. There's really nothing I can say because you're, you're resonating exactly where we talk about on our channel as well. So um, just real quickly, uh, Greg, so as we have this artificial, as we agree, suppressed economy fallout, uh, what does that look like in your opinion in the next, we'll say six, 12 months for the commercial and uh, residential real estate market? Oh, that's, that's another nightmare waiting to happen. And I think um, I think they're going to they're going to try to cover that up at least. I don't think that's going to become an issue. Um, it's an issue right now, but I mean, an issue that the public is going to be made aware of. Mm -hmm. um and until 2000 until after the election selection 2025 is when we're going to start seeing that uh there's no doubt look it's already starting we understand that it's well let's put this together we got the banking system right now is it, it, it's sick and it's dying. It's going to be consolidated if pe anyone who follows my work knows that the regional bank issues, I was telling people there were problems in the banking system before these issues with the regional banks even came up. I said, listen, what's going on here? No deposits, no loans, no deals. Now, they want us to believe, they want us to believe that it was fixed. The whole issue with the, with the regional banks, it never got fixed. Those issues are there and they've actually manifested and got even worse. With the, and not just that, these same issues are affecting the mega banks. No doubt about it. So what they're going to do is they're gonna, as this thing it gets worse uh, moving into 25, we're going to see more of this consolidate. They're going to consolidate power into fewer and fewer institutions. There's no doubt about it. That's just the way it's going to happen. And, and of course, they're going to say, well, we have to do this. And this, we have to, these, these, we're going to, they're going to actually go to the big banks. And I'm going to tell you who they're going to call on. They're going to call on Jamie Dimon of JP Morgan, because they always do. They're going to say, come up with a solution. And he's going to go, I got a solution for you. And they're going to absorb just like they did bear, um, and other institutions, we're probably going to see a failure of a major bank because, look, the public is going to demand a head. They're going to demand a head, um, and they're going to be handed one. One of the major institutions is going down. There's just no doubt about it. I think Bank of America is in bad shape. I think Bank of America um, is probably in the worst shape of, of, of the major institutions out there. I would not be surprised to see that that bank be the one that fails. Now, I'm not telling anyone this is written in stone, but I think from what I've looked at in the past, I haven't looked at it actually recently, but from, and I've warned about this too. There's a couple of other ones out there, but I think that one, at least going back a few months ago, was in the worst shape of, of the, the mega institutions here. I wouldn't be surprised to see that, that institution fail moving forward in, in 25, not this year. Right, right. Fair enough. Um, <clears throat> side note, you were talking about Bear Stearns, and I remember uh, I used to work for a company directly across from uh, Bear Stearns on Madison when they were building it up back then, 20, 2021, you recall. And I just mm -hmm. remember when GE stock was uh, supplanted by a tech company, and I'm going, this doesn't make any sense. How can that possibly happen? The whole thing stunk of artificial artificiality, and now we're seeing that happen, obviously, again, on a much grander scale. Mm -hmm. um, and I also love how you talk about um, the Federal Reserve is more federal than Federal Express. That is so true. It has no ties to the Constitution whatsoever, which not everybody realizes. Um, you know, you know, just on that, let me just say something while you mentioned that. Real oh, please, here. please. We cannot be a free people anywhere in the world if we, number one, don't have a sound money system. We have to live under their debt-based economic model that they have created for all of us. We're all slaves to it, obviously. Um, if we can't take back the system, again, be distracted by everything they want to throw at you. It's the money. It's the system itself. We need to take it back. We need a revolution against these institutions. They are public enemy number one. They're doing everything they can to destroy us, not just here in the United States, but around the world. They are consolidating central banks. They have had one goal since their inception to one day become the lenders and buyers of last resort to own it all, to be able to issue their product, their product. They issue one their one thing, debt, to the world in the form of their currency. Their currencies, these are not units of wealth. These are units of debt. We don't even own them. We go out and we work for these pieces of paper with numbers printed on them, well, more digital these days anyway, 
but we don't own them. They're owed back to the issuing central bank plus interest they create out of nothing. Imagine that system here, but we need to take back the system. If we don't take back the system, we're just going to remain where we are right now, slaves to it. And that, and that has been their goal, to run the world, to become the one world government that we have all been warned about for decades. Well, they're there now. They run the show. Central banks run the economy. They run the financial system. They run the financial markets. They control it all. And again, the propaganda, where does it come from? It comes from them. And then it's regurgitated by the mainstream propaganda ministries. It's insane. You can see, it gets me a little excited. In a bad way when I talk about this stuff. Well, you're passionate about getting the truth out, and I'm the same way. So it's it's many of the touchstones that we have, but it's it's coming from the right place, and it's coming from you've been foretelling it for quite a while. Um, last question for today, uh, Greg, because I know you're a busy man. Um, you mentioned uh, on several of your shows, and I could not agree more. An east-west reset. We see that happening on our side as well, uh, especially with regards to BRICS. Now, you probably saw last week that they have increased their position over the G7 with 35 percent of the world's GDP, and that looks to increase with several other nations coming on board. Two-part question, what country would you see coming up the rear to join BRICS that would be a formidable player? And two, how do you see this sort of Mexican standoff between them and the uh, treasury and the deep state? <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is huge, it's huge. All right, what's going on right now? People look, this, this, this new war, it has nothing to do with retaliation for anything. It has nothing to do with 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 U.S. bases being attacked in the right. Middle East. And why are we in the Middle East anyway? Not to protect terrorism. No, this is protect the oil. Oil. So it's all about. It's always about oil. Okay. Um, you know this. What we're seeing now is, is is a message that is being sent from the Federal Reserve to the BRICS nations: Do not threaten the petrodollar. That's what this is all about now. With that said here, um, there, there, there's still this threat now. I think the reason why we're seeing this kind of shock and awe moment, this is not going to stop. The United States and its coalition partners, none, not one, is a BRICS nation, by the way. The coalition, not mm -hmm. one is a BRICS nation. Here. Okay. Um, you know, they're sending a message. That's what this is all about. People have no idea. They're being duped yet again on an epic scale. Now, with regard to other countries here joining the BRICS nations, I know there's a lot that we're thinking about it. I want to see how this plays out. Because I believe this is this is going to the people who don't know are those that are, again, watching all the propaganda ministry and being fed a lot. People that are watching your show and I would hope shows like mine, they're able to see through this in a way that maybe most people can. You know, I think this there's really a natural selection going on. I've been telling people for years, there are some people that can see these things and it's as clear as day. Most people, because they've been so indoctrinated since since they took their first breath into their system here. Um, they, 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 Either they don't want to see it, they're blind to it, or whatever it might be. So, um, you know, unfortunately, this this thing is going to drag the world into. Um, and we've already started. This is World War Three. We're in it right now. It's it's not going to get any better anytime soon. Count on it. Um, and that's that's kind of how I see it right now. Okay, fair enough. Well, Greg, this is an absolute pleasure. Um, where can people find out more about you? I'm pretty easy to find. Just Google me. But my website, tracechoice.net, YouTube, um, I'm easy. To, I'm an easy guy to get. Okay. We'll put that link up in the description. If anyone is interested in learning more about us, you can find out more about us on our channel, www.realworldac.com. Greg, thanks so much for your time, and we look forward to having you on again soon. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.